Meet the Female Book A2. This is the latest grinder in Female Book's lineup, and it comes in at a remarkable $99. This, of course, is a unique category for grinders because it is the size of a hand grinder, albeit perhaps a slightly large one, but yet it's motorized with a high torque motor and significant battery life. So today we're going to do a teardown on this. We're gonna disassemble it and see what it has inside of it. Like most grinders from Female Book, this one has a lot of magnets that make this a mostly tool-free experience. However, there are a number of parts that you do need to use tools to get into. So today we're gonna to do that. I'll show you uh, the motor, how the burrs are assembled, and how to replace and upgrade the batteries if you want to. So with no further ado, let's start disassembling it. So to get access to the hopper, you just lift off this magnetically attached lid to remove the top of it, which contains the batteries and the motor, etc. You just rotate it and remove. You can see here that the button is touch sensitive for the A2. So you hold it to turn it on and then you press the button has a uh, auto shut off if there's no beans in the hopper. On the top, you can see that there is a uh, angled lid here that covers the motor and the battery assembly for magnets that hold the lid in place. And this is, you can see the lid there to see how they align. The construction of this is primarily plastic, but the key structural components are reinforced with bracing. Uh, in key places where it needs to be metal, it is. We'll get to that in a little bit. So this is the joint where the motor attaches to the axle for the burrs. So the catch cup is on the bottom. It is magnetically attached. There's magnets here on the corners that attach to those magnets there. As I mentioned, most of this is plastic. You can see that this is the outer housing here is plastic with reinforcements on it, which make it very sturdy feeling. It's amazingly sturdy for the fact that it's so light and that it is mostly plastic. However, some components, as I mentioned, are not plastic. This right here, this bracing, the axle uh, housing itself is metal. Uh, this washer here is the anodized metal washer. You can get an idea of what the burr looks like. If that looks familiar, it looks a lot like the burrs that you find in Easy Presso Grinder. This is the bottom. You can see the burr adjustment. Obviously it needs to be attached to the motor itself in order to do that, or you can use something to hold it in place uh, with a little bit of grip to change the settings. It does have 40 clicks per full rotation. This ring right here is metal and is connected back to the same housing that holds the, uh, the shaft in place. You'll notice that I do have some cosmetic issues here. I did, prior to this video, remove the outer burr housing. It's a cartridge style housing that holds the uh, inner burr in place. It is largely unserviceable. So I'm not gonna actually take this out in this video because unless you have the exact tools, um, this, the right sort of spanner wrench to lock in here, it is really difficult to get out and Part of the reason for that is that it does the the threads are counter to the rotation of the burr so as the burr runs as you're grinding the outer housing actually gets tighter so it's quite difficult to get open because the housing is pressed in place using likely a hydraulic press it would be what i would assume they use to press it into this aluminum housing uh, it is really unremovable it also has three uh, sorts of pins that are screwed in around the inner housing as well. As I mentioned, I don't believe it's serviceable, so I'm not actually gonna take it apart on video today. So let's go ahead and remove the burrs now. So we'll rotate this counterclockwise. Okay. 
So the numbering scheme on this is fairly similar to some other grinders uh, that are on the market today. You can see the dimples that are there match up to the ball bearings that are on the bottom here. And then this is a slotted assembly. So you slot it over top of the axle and that locks it in place. And that's what the torque is transferred through. Let's remove the spring and the bottom washer here. So the washer covers the inner bearing. And then on the top, we'll go ahead and remove the axle. Now I'd mentioned that the burr in this grinder, the A2, looks a lot like the burrs that are used in some of the Easy Presso grinders. You can see that here on the outer burr by looking at the bottom. Now look at the teeth on the top of the burr. Let me just leave these two pictures here. This is a picture of the inner burrs from a Q series grinder, as well as the X Ultra from Easy Presso. And then this is the outer burr from the Q series next to the A2. And yeah, they do taste pretty similar. Not identical, but pretty similar to me. This is the bearing that is the closest to the motor. This is where the axle slides into. Having double bearings helps keep this in close alignment. So now I want to show you what the top looks like, where the motor and battery and everything is housed. So with Movie Magic, we'll reassemble the burr assembly. And there we have it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this. So this top cap, where the beans sort of slide into the hopper, is actually attached by two screws right there and right there. This is actually a very long screwdriver path. So you're not gonna be able to use a typical uh, screwdriver like maybe this precision screwdriver from Weira. You're gonna need a longer one like this. So you'll slide that down into the channel. So here are your two screws that hold that in place. Once the screws are removed, you actually have to press down in the center and then lift it up and out. This is what that top cap looks like. And you'll notice here on the cap that there are marks that represent positive and negative poles for when you're putting the battery in. There are the two batteries. These are replaceable. The batteries that this uses are 18650, which is a very common uh, battery type. Uh, many of you may have them for flashlights or something like that, these rechargeable batteries. These are uh, two amp hours or 2000 milliamp hour batteries. You can get actually much higher capacity batteries than these out there if you wanna upgrade and get a lot more life or even potentially more uh, consistent voltage from these. So just keep that in mind. If you want to do a little upgrade, you can buy 18650 batteries. So this is what the inside from the top view looks like. You can see the circuit board with a contact point there on the top, which connects to this, the what I showed you earlier, which is the, the battery connections. And then it has a black and a white connector that can that power up the motor itself and also run down to the bottom to connect to the battery poles on the bottom. So let's go ahead and remove the two plugs and then we'll remove the motor itself. So to do this, you'll need to get uh, a small screwdriver. Uh, this is a PH0, Phillips zero size. And on the bottom, you will see that there are four screws that hold the motor in place. So we'll start with that and then we'll take off the connectors.
All right, so there are our four screws that hold the motor in place. So let's flip this back around again. So we'll use some pliers to lightly remove the two connectors. The white one connects to the motor and the black one connects to the batteries. I like the fact that they used matched colors in here so that you don't get the connectors the wrong places. Uh, I have seen some other grinders where they do not use unique colors uh, so you have to remember or take a photo to go back and plug it in the right place. So this is a nice touch from a self-service perspective. All right, so let's go ahead and pull out the motor. So this is the motor that comes included in it. So this is actually a con motor. This looks to be very similar to one of the standard motor styles that Con makes, which has planetary gears uh, built into this assembly here, metal gears uh, at the bottom and plastic gears as you get closer to the electric motor itself uh, because the torque gets amplified by the time it comes out of the output shaft. Uh, if you wish to go into this and actually see the gearbox assembly, uh, which is very, very delicate uh, and is really not intended to be opened up, but there are four screws around here. I will quickly do this to show what the inside looks like. However, do this with caution. So this is what the motor gearbox looks like. As I said, do this with caution. So this is a typical planetary gearbox with the sun being the connection to the motor itself. Uh, and then inside of the housing here, you can see the three planets that are used and at the top here because this is just high speed but not high torque uh, it is plastic gearing as you get to the bottom it switches to metal gearing be careful as you put it back together make sure everything is in nice alignment like so Let's uh, take a look at the inside now. So this is the connection that goes to the battery poles at the bottom. Uh, and this spring right here is what actually touches to the touch sensor to turn it on and to start grinding, etc. So in order to remove this circuit board, we're gonna have to be very careful not to damage that spring. It's delicate. So the way that you remove the board is as follows. If you notice on the bottom of this, there are two screws right there that have to be removed. So let's do that now. So with those two screws removed, we'll flip this back around. You'll now need to find a way to lightly compress this spring because it is in a circle sort of dish shape on the housing. So once you've gotten the spring out of the little dish, then you just grab the board lightly and slide it forwards. And you can see what the spring looks like there for the touch sensor. And this is the board itself. There's a little uh, rubber pad here. This is where the screws attach in the bottom, which is right near the USB-C charging port you can see right here on the top that it says FEMA book interestingly beside FEMA book it says V02 version 2 thought that was interesting so I'm not sure if this is this, this version 2 of their design process for the board uh, or if they had uh, designed two versions of the whole grinder but thought that was interesting so let's go ahead and put this back together as you assemble the board back into place, one of the things you have to make sure of is that the USB-C port is aligned properly. This is one of the challenges. You have to get the two screws aligned in the bottom, plus get the USB-C port into place. 
Okay, so there's the circuit board reattached. It's in place. You can see now that the spring is back in its little dish. You can slide the motor back into place. Hold it in place with your finger because you're likely going to have to rotate it a little bit so that you can align the screws. And it's reassembled again. So now just go back and plug the black connector back into the black plug and the white one into the white plug. You'll just need to press the wires down a little bit to make room for the cap to go back on. So we have to put the batteries back in. And we're just gonna set this into place. As I mentioned it kind of snaps there, so it does hold in place even before the screws. So let's go ahead and make sure that everything's working. All right, we've got power, that's a good sign. Let me go ahead and press the go. All right, it's working. Now you notice the RPM it's spinning at. It's only rotating at about 60 rotations a minute. So one per second, which is nice and slow for a conical grinder. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we have our two screws for uh, the cap. Again, they have to go down these long channels. So again, you'll need the very long screwdriver. Uh, this is a PH1. Uh, if you are looking at what size you need. All right, so once you have these good and snug down, the lid on top should be very stable, which it is. So now when you want to reassemble this, you'll take this and you'll rotate it to a 45 degree angle. And if it doesn't initially go in like this, what you'll need to do is just rotate you just kind of set it into place where you know it's supposed to be and then you'll wiggle that a little bit it'll align the axle and it snaps into place catch cup goes straight on the bottom magnetically and then the top cap goes there before i do that i'll show how this can be used as well so this bottom this is actually the lid but you'll notice that there's a ring that goes around it there's no ring on the top but there is on the bottom. So when you're using the catch, uh, catch cup for some reason, you can just take this and set it right over top. Cover the burrs. Uh, this also uh, perhaps can be used as a little shaker, I suppose. I will say that it doesn't align very well with the catch cup, so I don't think it's intended for that. I believe it's just intended to provide a cover if you want to do this. On the bottom of the catch cup, there is a rubber anti-scratch pad. So this is just to prevent a surface from being scratched. It is not an anti-vibration pad. It doesn't really absorb any vibration uh, from grinding that may be transferred into the surface. Uh, but it's nice and thin, prevents scratching. So this, again, is the Fimo Book A2. Excellent grinder, well built, well thought out, well engineered, and a remarkable value at $99. Happy brewing.